As we go into topic five now of chapter three, we're going to take a look at polynomial functions. And these are functions, of course, to the n degree. So looking at this first example, we see what is the degree of this function? Well, it's the highest degree, the highest power of any exponent on a variable. So we look at our variable here, x. This is a polynomial function to the first degree because there's a 1 there. And in this next one, we see x to the second. So this is a polynomial function to degree 2. And then in this one, x to the fourth, a function to degree 4. So recognizing that is part of the process. Now what we want you to do, and as we see these, is to sort of get a general idea of what a graph to a particular degree looks like. All right, so here is one of the basic forms when it's f of x equals a, which would be the coefficient of x, to a particular degree, the nth power. So as we look at example 1, we see this is to the third power, x to the third degree. And notice there is no other value out on the side here. So normally where our y-intercept might be, there is no value. So that's actually 0. So in this form, it's going to go through the origin. Now, how do you do it? Well, you set it up again using x equals 0. So when x equals 0, this is 0, and then y is 0, and of course that's your origin. Now you would use a variety of points, as they've listed here, and then sketch it in. Now notice this is a typical shape of x to the third. If you had a graphing calculator and put that in, this would be the basic shape. Now notice, if we had it to the second degree, we had a parabola. But now it's to the third degree, so it swings it down. Now, one of the other things we might mention while we're here is, what is the domain of this particular function? Now notice this goes down and eventually he's going to go all the way to the left. So for our x values, this is coming from negative infinity. And eventually it swings to the right to all the way over to positive infinity. So this is the domain of these functions. Now, as we look at the graph of a function in this form to the fourth degree, notice we've got some points. And the y-intercept is 0. So if x is 0, y is 0, it goes through the origin. And it tends to flatten out the bottom a little bit more and generally looks like this. Now, there are some other patterns that we'll take a look at because uh, many of the functions we'll see do not just have a simple value like this, but actually an expression over here with a number of terms, and that causes uh, the shapes to be modified. And we'll get into that here as we move on to the next part. Now, some general comments about a function in this form, 
again, where there are no other values to the right here, it's just this, is that if A is greater than zero, that is your A term is positive, the general shape of the graph will start low, go up like so. Now if A happens to be negative, that is it's less than zero, then it's going to start from the left high and go down this way. But again, going through the origin. And again, a little related to the parabolas, if A is positive, then the shape of it will open upward. And then here, if A is negative, that first value is negative, it's going to open up downwards. And we should also mention here, of course, this is odd. N is odd. The exponent is odd. That's the shape. And then here, if the exponent is even, the uh, even and A is positive opens upward. N is even. A is negative, opens, in a sense, downward. Okay, some general points. Now, as we get into more complex uh, polynomial functions, as you see down here, instead of just being a single term, there are a series of terms. Uh, this leads to peaks, which be described as something like this and valleys, which would be something like this. And we'll see this illustrated here shortly. And uh, there are certain properties associated with the polynomial. So for instance, the degree of this one is three, this one is five, this one is four, this one is six. Now notice your A term here is negative, so this would start high and then, but actually since it's negative and this is even, it's going to be opening toward the bottom. These would all start high and then go off in this direction. But you can also determine the number of peaks and valleys you would expect. Now, the number of peaks and valleys will always be less than the degree of the polynomial. And also, the number of x-intercepts may be equal or fewer than the degree of the polynomial. And this is, of course, described there. And summarized here, the total number of peaks and valleys of the graph of a polynomial function of degree n is at most n minus 1. And the number of x-intercepts of the graph of a polynomial function of the degree n is at most, that is, it could be equal to it, but it could be fewer. Now on this slide, we could pause and study it for a few moments and uh, look at what we've just described. So here is a function to the third degree. A is positive, so we're going to start low, go up, now, how many peaks does it have? Well, one there. And how many val valleys? One there. And how many x-intercepts? Well, there's an x-intercept there, there, and there. And you could go through in each of these and see these summarized. 
Now, in example C, uh, three, I should say, we're looking at this function. It's to the third degree, and we're seeing two x intercepts shown. Now, you might think, well, this looks like a parabola that should be x to the second degree, but it's to the third degree. So what we're wondering about this, is this, do you think, the proper graph of this, or is it perhaps incomplete? Well, you're looking at the third degree of a function, but we're only getting two x-intercepts. So chances are there's going to be another intercept out here because since we stopped here at 4, perhaps out here this is an 8. So the answer is, as we'll see on the next page, does it show a complete graph? And they're saying in the solution, no, because they haven't shown. See, they're just showing the graph up to about there. They've cut off where it would swing up. Because, again, to the third degree, you're going to need three intercepts. And there, if you put this in a graphing calculator, you get to see the whole. And again, working with a graphing calculator, you may have to set the window to certain parameters to allow all of the graph to fit in to the display window of the graph. But again, we're not featuring that here. Now, in example four, they're asking us to graph this function. Now, notice it's written in factored form. And if we were to multiply all these three binomial factors together, we would see we would end up with an exponent of x to the third power. So this is a function to the third degree. So we would expect three x-intercepts. And how would we find it using this particular function? Well, we would say that y is zero out here. And it would be like finding the zeros. So we would equate each of these factors to zero, which is what they're doing. And then you have algebraically solved for your three x-intercepts. So one is going to be there at, uh, let me put it correct here, all right, that's better. So our negative 2 is there. Our 1 is there. And our negative 3 halves is there. Now, we know that this is to the third degree. So it's going to look sort of like that, where these are our x-intercepts. So we know where the graph would cross the x-axis, but we don't know how high or how low they're going to go. But we do know, for instance, that between this, the x value is going to, between, going to be between these 
so somehow this will probably go up and then between these it's going to go down somewhat and that sort of gives us a little bit of the shape of the graph so the text is suggesting at this stage that we do some test numbers for instance suppose x is a negative 3 and we look at the interval where x is less than negative 2. So we put that value in where the x is, put that negative 3 in there, we find that x is a, our f value then, our y value is negative 12. So negative 12 is below the x-axis. So up over here where this is a value of x is a negative 2 and y is a negative 12 and I should say a negative 3 is what we've put in there that here is the negative 2 there is 0 here and this value now will be over there somewhere. So you're starting through getting some test points, some other lines on that graph. And by testing other values here, uh, here they're giving us a nice fraction, and here they're giving us a zero, here they're giving us a two, we get some other points so you might get a tentative graph that looks like so and then a particular graph then that looks like this now keep in mind much of these values you would need the use of calculus that we're not doing in this course but in some later courses to actually get the actual graph but you see through uh, careful study and trial of various points, you can develop a shape of a graph from the original function they gave us. Now they are showing us some polynomial models of things in regression that we're not going to do in this course. So this will wind this up.